Mallory here with the very first official unvarnished vlog. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about why I chose Elizabeth Siddle, why I was driven, inspired to create this project, this particular one person show about this person. And the roots of it go back longer than I care to admit, um, to my college days when one day I went in a bookstore and this was sitting on the display. It's Jan Marsh's Pre-Raphaelite Women, which unfortunately is now out of print, although used copies are not that difficult to come by, uh, especially in the age of the internet. Uh, but anyway, I was flipping through this book the day that I saw it in the bookstore, and I am, um, picture this, 19 years old, tall, skinny, red hair, kind of awkward, big dreamer, and I found this lady. Now, I knew who she was to some extent. I had seen, um, I'm sure I had seen the Ophelia. I think I may have seen some other paintings that she was in as well, although I was still just learning what this whole pre-Raphaelite thing meant. It's often pointed to as a you know, kind of pointing at the difference between the way Rossetti saw Lizzie and the way Lizzie saw herself. But what I saw in the self-portrait, maybe even more than that, there was a shock that went through me that was like, it was like recognition. It was, you know, at the time, my, my like hindbrain reaction was, oh my God, that's me. Which I have later realized is not so much necessarily that she looks that much like me. I think there are other people who look more like her, but there is this look in her eyes and in the very searching way that she is looking out of that canvas that I recognize as what happens when you look in the mirror. I was a dancer first. I started in ballet when I was five. And so that relationship with the mirror of looking for the details and looking for what's really out there and what is really being seen um, was something that was very familiar to me. And so it kind of all started there. Uh, fast forward a few years, um, I really don't know I couldn't tell you what it was that sparked the mental images in my head of like the stage pictures I want to have of this show and why my brain said, yes, it needs to be a one person show, except that, um, you know, around that time, which was about 10 years ago, there was not, actually it was more than 10 years ago, there wasn't that much out there about her. You kind of had to read between the lines. and. You know, it was very easy to find things that other people said about her. It was very difficult to find her own words. And this is true, of course, of, of all of the women in the Pre-Raphaelite circle. It's true of really women throughout history. But with Lizzie, who took that extra step, who became a poet and became a, an artist and tried, made, did her damnedest to make her way in this world on her own terms, this, the traces that are left of that are kind of enigmatic and, and sort of contradictory almost because on the one hand you have these very romantic images a lot of the time that she created in her art that was, you know, going along with a lot of what the rest of the Paraphylite circle was doing and, you know, these poetic scenes out of Shakespeare, out of, you know, classical literature and all that stuff. And so, you know, with her own little view on it, like I love her Lady of Shalott has this very, is weaving in this very plain room with a, with a, you know, crucifix on the wall. And so she's almost in like a nun's cell rather than in this very opulent, lush environment that she tends to be painted in. Um, but you have, you know, all the, 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 the beautiful colors and the lines and the, and the, the, the chivalry and all of these things and those things you have. And then on the other, you also have her poetry, which is very much of the time of the, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot in it about love. There's a lot in it about loss. It's very, it's very romantic, very Victorian poetry. Um, 
and you know kind of very serious and and lofty kind of ideas almost and then on the other hand uh, you may have already seen the video with the excerpt from the staged reading with this letter that Lizzie wrote from Nice, from France, at Christmas time in 1855. Now she was traveling to the south of France for her health and she was cranky and didn't want to be there and you know, but she writes this letter about the adventure of picking up money that someone had sent her at the post office. And there's this whole saga because when she arrived in Nice, they had to turn their passports to the police station, but to get the money for the post office, they had to show their passports. And it's hilarious. Uh, my husband says it sounds like something Oscar Wilde might have written. Someone else once said, my God, was that Dorothy Parker a hundred years ahead of her time. Um, you know, and so you have this really snarky, very dryly humorous thing that is the longest chunk of her own words about her own life that we have. So, you know, between these two things, I started thinking, who is this person really? And, and from there, the show has developed into, once I started writing it, it really started getting into examining the different roles that were thrust upon her as the model, as the invalid, as the lover, and which ones of those, which of those roles she resisted, and which one she chose to embrace, and how, and how she took all of these pieces, all of these different reflections, and built them into her own self, and how she defined herself, how what we have of her from history speaks to me, and that's the Lizzie that I want to put on stage and have speak to you. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you'll follow on the journey.